Hello, my name is Dominique and thank you so much for joining us today. I have the rest of the Green Week team here. We have Dave and Andrew and helping drive this live stream, we have Natalie. All right, folks, we are gonna discuss the Applebee's Seneca, South Carolina opportunity. But first and foremost, we always like to provide a quick overview of our mission here at Greenleaf Connect. Uh, we always strive to be transparent and informative and host both weekly live streams and private connect events every Thursday afternoon with a new topic every week that highlights a portion of our business. Live streams are more open to the public and private connect events are more interactive. So before we start here, we always like to start with some rules of engagement. First, you do have the option to change your presentation view. You can click and drag to make the presentation bigger or smaller, or you can select speaker spotlight view. All right, folks, there is a Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen under the reactions button. There will be a Q&A session at the very end of this presentation, but you do not need to wait until the very end to submit any questions. Just use this feature and we will be using that to facilitate the conversation. This is a friendly reminder that this live stream is recorded and will be shared with you via email by the end of the week this week. So before I pass it to our hosts, really folks, we're gonna discuss uh, Applebee's Duluth, uh, one of our recent acquisitions and sales. And then we will dive into the Applebee Seneca opportunity. And then we will close with that Q&A session at the end. All right, without further ado, I will pass it over to our hosts, Dave and Andrew. Thanks everybody. Doing it again, Dave. Yes, today again. Thank you, Dominique. Uh, thanks for joining us today, everyone. We are excited to talk about the Applebee Seneca deal, but we, we also, before we really dive into it, want to just recap what we did with the Applebee's Duluth deal. Uh, Andrew and I, we've been talking a lot about the partnerships we're making with different operators and how that benefits us in the deal sourcing and execution of these projects. That's really where we see the the value opportunity. So you think about Applebee's Duluth, uh, we purchased this one for $2.6 million. This was, a, this was pretty much a home run, $2.6 million. Literally, we closed uh, right before COVID hit. Yeah, March of March of, 20. Uh, March of 20. Closed in March of 20. And brokers started calling me and saying, hey, Andrew, sell your Applebee's. Said, we just bought it. Why are we going to sell it? A year later, we sold it. We bought it for about a six and a half, or bought it for seven, seven cap. Yep. And then we sold it for a 6.5 cap. So bought, bought it for 2.6 million and sold it for 3.06 million in a year. Home run by all means. It's a challenging year for challenging year too. And, and also that was actually my second Applebee's I, I, I've had experience with. So the Applebee's, uh, we've had experience with Applebee's in Dawsonville, Applebee's in Duluth was the one we just sold. And the Applebee's franchisee uh, is uh, it's called Neighborhood Restaurant Partners, which is a, um, a business owned by a company called Argon Capital, which is a company in Buckhead. Their office is right in uh, Buckhead near the yeah. Lenox Mall. And they own 120 different uh, Applebee's locations. So yeah. they're, they're one of the larger operators. Of Applebee's, fourth fourth largest operator of Applebee's. Of I think it's about a, it's yeah. a thousand plus unit chain. Yeah. So. so I mean, in this case, we did exit that deal within a year. That's not always our game plan, but we are looking. You know, we're always opportunistically looking for how we handle the position within a deal. So that brings us in to the Applebee's that we have now in Seneca. Uh, so we just got this one under contract, getting ready to close this thing, and. We're very excited for the same reasons we were excited about the last two of these Applebee's deals. We really like this Applebee's deal. Too. So does anything sound familiar about this one? We're buying it roughly for a 7.7 .7 cap. We are buying this one with a short lease. And so we're taking the lease risk, uh, the lease, not, not lease risk, but yeah. Either. Okay. And um, we're, we're going to get the uh, lease extension is roughly about three years left on it. This is actually a corporately owned Applebee's too. So it's owned by the Applebee's franchisor. They own roughly about 69 units right now. This is one of their units. Uh, and we know this is a great performing unit, which we'll get into shortly. We're gonna buy it right at a 7778 cap. It's an absolute triple net lease. So there's it's one of your favorite deals, Dave, because you don't do anything. Yeah, we, you know, we've talked about this in various levels in the retail segment before of, of triple net versus double net or single net, or what other responsibilities do we have? Uh, and when we think about responsibilities, really, they just mean what other risks do we have? And, 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 and um, this is also one of your favorite topics, too, talking about professional operators. So this company is literally a multi-million dollar franchisee of other brands. So they have IHOP, they have John Deere, they have On the Border, 
They have Sonny's Barbecue for all your barbecue fans. Yeah. And uh, they actually own the uh, brand on the border. So there's an on the border in Buckhead and there's on the borders. So yeah, that's, that's a pretty popular. popular uh, other, it's a very large Mexican Tex -Mex restaurant chain. They have about 150 units. Yeah. And for our strategy in the retail segment, most of the brands we're going with have 400 plus units, right? So, so they, the group that operates this Applebee's has hundreds of units in multiple different brands, but we're really looking at uh, retail brands that have over 400 units. Applebee's has just over 1,800. And then here, you know, landlord responsibility is nothing. So we don't have any responsibility here. That's the main thing of the full triple net lease on this deal. So if you think about Applebee's, there's been, you saw the TikTok video we did at the very beginning of this. Andrew's uh, going to show his dancing skills at the, at the end of this okay, Q&A. So, so how cool is it when a, a mature brand that's known for probably some, an older audience all of a sudden becomes cool to a younger audience? So out of the blue, this guy named Walker Hayes comes on TikTok, which maybe some of us do and don't know. In fact, I think I'm the only one in the room that keeps up with social media. You don't keep up with social media. Uh, yeah. Okay, so Dave is not on TikTok. I have a TikTok account. I apologize to everybody right now. But TikTok has this um, incredibly viral video with a country singer named Walker Hayes, who, uh, as you can read by the article, he's been 10 years with some sort of moderate success in the country song business. He came up with a silly dance and, and a song called Fancy Like. And there's a quote inside the song that talks about Applebee's and date night with his, um, his wife. And uh, there's the quotes. Uh, and he talks about the Bourbon uh, Street steak and an Oreo shake in the song. And it's a pretty catchy little tune. And, and there's millions and millions of hits. on. And he, if you just look at Walker Hayes, you will see endless news about him. And Applebee's partnered with him to do an advertising <laughs> campaign with his video. Yeah. And he's still, like Applebee's became, who expected Applebee's? To be on Rolling Stone. Yeah, well, they had already, you know, they've been doing well, but yeah, they weren't uh, really in the in the running to be in Rolling Stone. So their biggest challenge has been um, extent, uh, generating business from a younger audience, and so look what happened. So yeah. they essentially met their uh, they're getting a younger audience looking at them and, and looking at what they're doing. And um, what's interesting about this one is that uh, if you go to the, there was actually an advertising campaign Apple Bees did with him, and he yeah yeah he's like a spokesman for the brand in a couple of different yeah so he's being paid it. now by them and I, I i i don't i tried to find this but i don't know if, what came first i don't think applebee's came to him and said do this oh I think, no yeah. i think he just sort of did it by accident and all of a sudden oh boy look at this yeah and uh, he's got six kids by the way so he's, he's beating josh he's beating josh for kids yes all right so let's talk about seneca south carolina uh we've uh green for always talking about going up and down the 85 corridor and then that's to the, to the east and then to the west, up and down the 75 corridor. This is right on the South Carolina border. Uh, there's Lake Hartwell, which is a huge lake uh, right outside of essentially Greenville. Uh, it's uh, north of Gainesville. So in between that is Seneca. And, and don't forget, very important, it is just north of Lake Hartwell. But if you look at the little red dot on the screen, it's literally right on Lake uh, I'm going to pronounce this incorrectly, Lake Kiwi, which is another lake very close to Lake Hartwell. And I, when I went to the location, literally you drive around the block and you are in a lakefront community. So the Applebee's literally is the lakefront's backyard. Yeah. So how much better does real estate get? From that? <laughs> well, yeah, you see on this main strip, there's pretty much every large retail brand on this strip as well. Uh, so and everything from fast food to Walmart and Lowe's and all that stuff on this strip. It's the main yeah. main kind of drive in this area. And as far as traffic count, I mean, it does 27,000 vehicles per day driving by this sign. That's a lot of traffic. I mean, that's, that's pretty much as good as it gets. I mean, once you get a, 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 above 10,000, that's pretty good. You get above 20,000, really good. But 27,000 is... That's very strong. It would be top percentile. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go, in, go into the next part, which is how do we assess if this is a good Applebee's location or not? We already we talked about we like the we like the location, we like the traffic, and then this goes into the how many visitors are actually there. And, and so this is why we this is I'm going to have to give a little bit of a shout out to uh, to David Wiseman right now, who's our acquisition manager. He uh, he had this on our um, on our, our our deal our, our deal um, list for a long time, and we were kind of not necessarily ignoring it, but we had many other things looking at. And he didn't really expect to look at this until we went to the placer data. We looked at the placer data and the placer data puts this as one of the top performing Applebee's in South Carolina. So in South Carolina right now, in a, in a 50 mile radius of where this is located, it's the number two performing uh, Applebee's by foot traffic. 
And then uh, nationally, it's in the 84th percentile of all Applebee's in their chain. That's, that's, so it's, it's, it's good. And very and then, strong performer. And then what we also did is we, we did both. We validated the foot traffic and we also validated the sales. And so the sales of this unit are phenomenal too. The average Applebee's, we'll forget about 2020, but the average Applebee's in 2019 pre-COVID was about 2.4 million. And this Applebee's is going to beat their 2009 metrics and probably be at three or 3.2 million yeah. for, for the all year of, this year. Yeah, for all of 2021. So they're, all of 2021. So they're doing better now than they were pre-COVID. Correct. Yes. So we, in our quarterly recap, we talked a little bit about how people interactions have changed and, and you know, things are definitely different in how we're doing stuff. But even Applebee's adapting to that, uh, their sales now are better than they've ever been. And I will say, like, I, I, I've been going to, I did go, I've been to two Applebee's in about a month right now. And um, the bourbon chicken and the shrimp, bourbon chicken and shrimp, believe it or not, <laughs> it's good. I like it. And you know what? It's not that expensive. You can go to Applebee's and you eat for $20. How do you go to a sit-down restaurant and have a good meal for $20? I just, yeah. spent, I just spent $11 at Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And you don't get to sit there. Yeah. I don't get to sit there. And, you know, then you feel like, oh, I just ate greasy food. <laughs> All right, so we think about how does this deal stack up, right? We went through foot traffic. We went through uh, vehicle traffic. It's in a growing population area, and we like the location. So it's got all the key points that we want. And then we have to determine, hey, are we buying it at a good cap rate? So look, so there's two circle deals on there. I wonder who those two deals are from. <laughs> that, was a lay that was a layup. But we've got two on here. <laughs> that uh, We are now our own comps. Yeah, so we made it into our own comp list of the recent transactions. Uh, when we go through this and we pick like our sale and these comparables, we're not going through and trying to say like, hey, let's just find five deals that make our deal look good, right? There's not a lot of point in that. We're going through like, what are all the recent transactions that fall relatively close to our markets that we compete in and what do they trade for? So here you see, we've got two on here. We have our acquisition, the, the lowest circle there in Duluth where we bought it at a 7.68 cap rate. And then you see it again at the top there where we sold it for a 6.52% cap rate. And, and in, in there, we did get a, we, we had a COVID concession. We gave them and we got a lease extension out of it. So we, we bought it with a yeah. short lease and we sold it with a longer lease. That's and we, the, did, we did pretty well. That's the same game plan with this deal, right? We have same a game plan. We buy, the, we buy the short lease. We get the extension. We try to extend it, hopefully, as long as we can. And then we sell it for a little bit less. We sell it for a little bit less of a uh, cap rate, some more money. Right now we're going in at a 7.75. And this is one of the higher cap rates, at, you know, really the highest of all of the deals that have transacted here recently yeah, within and, the brand. And don't forget what's important too is just look at the average cap rate that Applebee's sell for. Applebee's are just selling for in the Southeast, the comps that we pulled, they're selling for a 6.6 .6 cap. We're buying this at a 7.7 yeah. .7 cap. So we're buying it at a good price yeah, compared we're to buying the it with value in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We haven't got the appraisal back yet, but my expectation would be the appraisal is a little bit higher uh, than we're actually purchasing it for. So overall deal metrics, like we like talking about what is our going in year one performance going to look like and what is year five performance? What's year three performance? What's a terminal point in time? Uh, and in this case, we're comparing year one and year five. Right. And, and, and this is just our standard model. So we compare all deals the same. So people compare apples to apples. But if we were just to keep this deal and not sell it, the, uh, the cash return in year one is going to be 8.4%, and the cash in year five will roughly be about 9%. But then if you include principal payment uh, in year five, the return on, the, on the, the deal, if we don't sell it, is roughly 14%. So that's pretty good if we don't even sell it. Yeah. That's... And so then if we sell it, we get the next business case. Of what does it look like when we sell? Yeah. We're always going to project what a sale could be. Uh, we want to provide a, a, an investment horizon to get an idea of how does this stack up. We look at like, hey, year five, we're going to exit. Uh, that's just kind of a planned assumption we make uh, out of the gates. And if we do or do not exit, we're always going to have a capital discussion at that time. Say, hey, uh, with our investment group of what we're looking to do here. But year five here, I mean, we, we just had a slide two slides ago. We talked about the average uh, exit cap rate being around six, six and a half percent. Six point six, yeah, on the comps. So, yeah, and we, we sold our two for six. Or I've sold two for six point five cap. Yeah, and, and here we're we're being a little conservative. We're saying six point seven five. This bottom row right here, uh, we have a sensitivity analysis of if cap rates are higher or lower wherever they could go. But we're pegging six point seven five on this deal, and. 
You can see if we invest $100,000, this is our typical year zero. Each year, you can see it starts out around $8,300. It climbs a little bit each year with the escalation, it gets to $8,600. And then if we were to exit at the 6.75 cap rate, we're looking at around an 18 and a half percent cap. Uh, yeah, I mean, nineteen percent for a conservative exit is pretty good. But what I was, what I like even more, look at look, look what happens when we get to the six point five or the six point two five cap. We're getting yeah. north of twenty percent on IRR, and that's that's yeah, that's in pretty good. A lot of that exit cap value uh, is going to be based on what the renewal of the lease looks like. Whether we get if we get a renewal, it's only. They don't do two-year renewals, but let's oh, say you get a short would be, one. One would be five years. Or you get a longer, a 10-year right. with extensions. That's really going to drive what our cap rate is. So that's our value creation opportunity here is going into that renewal, uh, doing the best we can as we assess rate versus length of term and see how that impacts our exit cap rate. Right. The and, and the lease renewal, I mean, just to be very frank, it does become a, it's, it's a horse trading. So they're going to ask for something and they're going to give us something. Oh, yeah. So, we're gonna we're gonna trade to see what kind of what what do they need for the longest lease term, and then we'll do a business calculation. And ultimately, the longer the lease they give us, the lower the cap rate goes, and then the higher our internal rate of return goes for this deal. So yeah. the goal is longest yeah. lease possible, long as we can. Yeah. yeah. And again, we don't have any capital improvements that are going into this deal. So this is a you know we're buying it. The only thing that we are working on and assessing is the current lease and what we're going to do on the renewal. That's our, that's our task post-closing is turn this lease into the best lease we can, and that will be our value creation. All right. Well, that's, that's it for this. We're going to turn it over to Dominique and go through some of the schedule stuff we have, and then also look at the Q&A. Yes. Thank you, Dave and Andrew. We always like to leave you with some upcoming dates specifically for Appleby Seneca. Uh, your subscription package will become available to you by November 16th, and we ask for those to be due by November 30th all and to prepare for closing on December 14th. All right, I will push this over to Natalie and we will jump into Q&A. Thank you, Dominique, and thank you to everyone who submitted questions. We also wanna remind you that you can continue to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to submit questions as we work through those that have come in so far. So first, can you highlight the background of the operator for us again, and are they personally guaranteeing the lease? Well, the operator is actually the Applebee's Corporation. So yep. for this particular one, we have another one coming up that's a local franchisee, but this one is the actual Applebee's franchisor who operates this one. So the Applebee's Corporation that franchises a thousand plus Applebee's is running about 69 restaurants right now. So this is one of those 69. So it's backed by that corporation. But there's not a personal guarantee. No personal guarantee. Yeah. I mean, at that point, who is the personal guarantee? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a public. True. Guarantee. But yeah, but it's uh, not a personal guarantee. It's just Applebee's Corporation. Dine Equity is a publicly traded company. So the, the company that, that is on this lease is um, actually in the New York Stock Exchange. I think it's the New York Stock Exchange. It's a, it's a D-I-N, I believe, Dine Equity. Can you review the lease terms for us again? Lease terms, roughly uh, three years. We have a three-year term left and they have, it's four five-year options left on their, um, on their current lease, which is when it's roughly so they have about 20, 25 years left on their lease right now total. So but they can just execute one of those options and then there's no real negotiation. Yeah, there's, they, already, there's already options built into the lease right. for them to just say, hey, we're just going to go do this and we have another five-year lease. Uh, that's always an option that they could pick. With a predefined rent increase too. Our next question is, what is the strategy to renew the lease and create value and maximize the most favorable cap rate at sale? Well, honestly, these are all relationships. So we get, once we close, we give it a little bit of time to season, make sure we're getting everything right, make sure we understand who the contacts are inside Applebee's. And then we start the conversation with the real estate department. So it's this uh, inside, inside of every, of every one of these big corporations, there's somebody who manages lease and lease term and looks at the viability of the business, looks at actually whether they're gonna wanna stay or not stay. And so we're gonna talk to the person who's actually in that, in that business inside of, um, inside of the, uh, the franchise order. And our last question, can re you review the debt term? Debt terms are, are uh, uh, we're going to use one of our study eddy banks, which is uh, Coastal States Bank. We're going to get three point, I believe it was three point seven five percent debt. Is that I think that's what was on the uh, deck. I'm doing it by memory right now, with a um, with a term consistent with the lease, and then I also kind of uh, uh, put a little bit of um, pressure on them to give us a, a, an easy renewal option. So if we decide not to sell in three years, we'll have a very easy renewal option with the bank too. Yeah, a lot of our going in loans on assets are tied to that lease term. 
So it's like, why would we get a three-year loan versus a five-year loan or a seven-year loan or something? It's all tied to what that, uh, what that lease term is going in. So we're going to work really, you know, we've got two parts. We've got the bank part and, we, and we've got the operator part. We're going to work with the operator to extend the lease or see if they're just going to select an option. And then as soon as we have that information, we go back to the bank and say, hey, what does this look like now from the debt terms that we can, uh, that we can achieve to hold the deal uh, longer? And that's really when we have this uh, buy versus uh, or sell versus hold analysis to see what do these bank terms look like that we would get on the refin on the renewal versus uh, selling. Well, and we all know real estate is very cyclical. So I mean, there's good times to buy and there's good times to sell, and there's also good times to hold because you're holding it through something yeah. that's happening, and you could be holding it through a cycle of increasing values and you don't want to sell it yet because why am I going to sell it if values are still increasing? And that's what happened with apartments for a long time. Values kept on increasing. In fact, they're still increasing right now. And so every day you're right. making decisions not to sell an asset because there's no reason to because it keeps them going up in value. All you have to do is sit there and twiddle your thumbs and it's worth more than the next maybe day. Maybe a little more than twiddling thumbs. But yeah, yes. yeah. But, but almost, you sit there. Maybe somebody else does the work there. Great. Well, those are all the questions we have. Again, we want to thank everyone for participating. And of course, we want to thank Dave and Andrew for sharing the details of our new Applebee's deal with us. As we wrap this up, we'll pitch this back over to Dominique to review our upcoming dates. Yes, as we close, we will leave this slide up on your screen for you to reference uh, just some upcoming dates in regards to Greenleaf Connect today. Obviously, we discussed Applebee's Seneca, South Carolina, and November 11th, we will be discussing uh, our Covington Flex, our recent uh, industrial deal. Uh, this is a friendly reminder to still join us for our Greenleaf Investor Forum coming up soon next week. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding that event or how you can participate, please don't hesitate to reach out directly to myself and I'm happy to assist. All right, folks, this does- Dominique, there's one more important date that's not on there. November 18th, our Zaxby's. Yes, November 18th, we will be, uh, we recently closed on our Zaxby's Kennesaw deal. So we will be having a closing celebration for our Zaxby's investors located in Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, details will be sent to you. Um, within the next day or two uh, regarding dates, times, locations, address, anything really you need to participate. All right, this does conclude our regularly scheduled program. We thank you so much for joining us today. Again, this live stream will be made, made available to you by the end of the week this week via email. And you can also check out our YouTube channel for all of our recorded live streams as well. All right, well, we hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.